Your life begins in a shallow gravel grave. You're an orphan before you are born. Your parents, having completed their brutal one-way journey, are long dead. Their decaying bodies now just nutrients for the very river that serves as your cradle. You wiggle free from your egg, a tiny, vulnerable creature known as an alevin, with a clumsy yolk sac still attached to your belly. For the first year of your life, you are not a king yet. You are a peasant, a bottom dweller. You are a par, your flanks covered in vertical, finger-like markings that serve as camouflage, helping you blend in with the shadows of the river stones. Your world is a few square feet of stream bed. Your life is a constant hunt for microscopic insects and mayfly nymphs, a struggle for every tiny calorie. And everything wants to eat you, you learn to fear the flash of a larger fish. A hungry rainbow trout, the queen of this river section, darts through your school, and you survive only by pressing yourself flat against the gravel. You learn to fear the sky. A belted kingfisher, a blue missile of a bird, dives from above, and you witness a sibling disappear in a splash of violence. Your entire first year is spent in a state of constant, grinding paranoia. You're not a predator. You are prey. As you approach your first year, your body begins to betray you. A violent, stressful metamorphosis called smultification rewrites your very being. Your chemistry changes, preparing you for the lethal salt of the ocean. Your cryptic par marks, the camouflage that has kept you alive, fade away, replaced by a coat of brilliant, shimmering silver, a flashing target in the familiar river. An irresistible primal urge pulls you away from the only home you have ever known, downstream, towards the great unknown. The journey to the sea is a gauntlet. The estuary where the river meets the ocean is a killing field, a banquet for every predator that feasts on the annual smolt run. You survive through sheer speed and dumb luck. And then you arrive, the Pacific Ocean. A world of impossible scale, a vast blue kingdom that makes your home river seem like a puddle. For the next few years, this is your domain. Fueled by the ocean's endless buffet of herring and squid, your growth is explosive. You transform from a small silver fish into a colossal, muscular predator, a true titan of the sea. But every kingdom has its god. While hunting, you encounter them. A pod of orcas. These are not just any killer whales. They are salmon specialists, and you, the king salmon, are their primary source of food. The hunt is a terrifying display of intelligent, coordinated power. You flee, your incredible speed no match for their strategy. In a final desperate maneuver, you escape, but not unscathed. The tooth of an orca rakes across your back, leaving a deep, permanent scar. Then one day, it simply stops. A switch flips deep within your ancient DNA. The schools of herring that once triggered a ferocious hunger now pass by and you feel nothing. Your appetite is gone, replaced with a new, singular, and tyrannical obsession, the urge to go home. You begin to swim, not in search of food, but in search of a memory. A journey of thousands of kilometers across a featureless ocean begins guided by an internal map you don't understand. You are using the Earth's magnetic field as a compass, and deep within your ear bones, tiny structures called otoliths hold the precise chemical signature of your home river, a scent memory from your birth. As you travel, your body, no longer fueled by the ocean's bounty, begins to consume itself. Your sleek, powerful form begins to change, preparing for a different kind of battle. After a long and arduous journey, you finally find it the mouth of your home river. The scent is unmistakable. It is the beginning of the end. You are a pilgrim on a one-way trip to your own grave. You enter the river, and the taste of fresh water is a shock to your system after years in the salt. Your body, already consuming itself, accelerates its grotesque transformation. Your color deepens to a dark, angry red. Your jaw elongates and hooks into a vicious, toothy sneer called a kipe. You are no longer a silver king, you are a monster. The journey upstream is a brutal vertical battle. Your first great enemy is the river itself, a towering waterfall. You watch others of your kind attempt the leap, only to be thrown back against the rocks. 
fueled by a purpose that overrides all self-preservation, you launch your massive, scarred body into the air, crashing through the torrent and landing, bruised but successful, in the pool above. But your greatest enemies are waiting. You arrive at the shallow gravel bars, and there they are, the gods of this domain. Giant grizzly bears stand in the river like furry mountains, snatching your fellow pilgrims with horrifying ease. You must run the gauntlet. It is not a fight, it is a terrifying game of timing and luck, weaving through a maze of claws and jaws. A bear lunges, its claws scraping your back, but you surge forward. You clear the bear's killing field only to be met by death from above. A bald eagle, perched on a dead tree, dives like a missile. You make a desperate dash for a deep, dark pool, escaping its talons by inches. And all along the riverbanks, another predator stands, the persistent human angler. You have no desire for food, but your hormonal rage makes you lash out at a brightly colored lure that drifts too close. You are hooked for a moment, but your sheer desperate force snaps the line. You press on. A battered, wounded, and decaying shell of your former self, powered only by the memory of a scent, getting ever closer to your destination. You arrive. After thousands of kilometers, you recognize it instantly, the perfect chemical taste of your native river. You are home. But this is not a place of peace. The spawning grounds, or reds, are a chaotic arena of decaying, hook-jawed titans just like you, all driven by the same singular, violent purpose. You are not the only king to return. You must now fight for your right to create a legacy. You engage in a final brutal battle with another massive male. It is not a fight for survival, but for succession. A grotesque clash of dying, zombie-like kings, using your hooked jaws and last ounces of energy to ram and bite each other into submission. You win. Battered, torn, and on the verge of total collapse, you earn your place beside a female as she lays her thousands of bright, jewel-like eggs in the gravel nest she has carved. You move beside her and release your milt, fertilizing them. In that single, fleeting moment, your entire life's purpose is fulfilled. The year of hiding in the river, the years of raining in the ocean, the scars from the orca, the brutal journey home, all of it culminates in this one act. And then it is over. With your genetic duty complete, the last of your energy vanishes. Your massive, ocean-fed body, rich with marine nutrients, will now decay and become the very fertilizer for the river. Your flesh will feed the insects and microorganisms that your own children will eat when they hatch. Your long, epic, and brutal journey was in the end a mission to return home, die, and become the first meal for your own legacy. So, what do you think is a more brutal fate? To be born to die for a single purpose, or to live a long life with no purpose at all? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you were moved by the epic journey of the King Salmon, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and hit that hype button for the next video. Thanks for watching.